Right, so the installation of the uh, main two servos for the rudder and elevator in the Avanti. Now, let me just talk you through the thought process because this literally is one of those measure twice, glue once. I have my tailplane connected and um, so what we need to do is I've slid the fuselage, uh, sorry, I've slid the boom in fed it through the uh, two tube holes. Now, little tip there, don't try and grab the tube with a pair of pliers. Now, what I've actually done is I got my servo tray, not glued in at the moment, and I've just sat that roughly in position. I marked where I think the outer parts of the cable, of uh, the push-pull uh, cables need to go. Um, so and I've marked those then what I did was I I slid the whole thing back out again slid back the carbon tube and then cut them with a very very sharp knife then fed the whole thing back in the reason for doing that is what I didn't want to do was you know not cut them properly um, if they're in the fuselage I wanted to get a nice neat cut because otherwise they're going to bind so I've now slid these back into place um, I've got the boom has to sit at um, 10 millimeters past this form. I think it's F4, but please check the um, instructions. Um, it, it's just eyeballed square at the moment because we're not gluing this bit. What we're trying to do is get our servos and everything installed first so that um, I'm happy with the lengths. And then when I'm happy with all of that, and I, I can then, when I've got it all ready, then I can start thinking about attaching the um, servo. So at the moment, all I've done is I've just got these to length. This is the outers we're talking about getting the lengths. And I've also got the rough lengths on the back here. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to jig this all in place. And when I'm happy, I'm going to then put the... Now, the issue is when you put the main wing on with the screws, Obviously you can't get to anywhere to actually glue it. So I'm going to weight mine down on the bench. I'm gonna put a wing, the wing on and in place. I'm gonna screw it down, see if I can hold everything. Then I'm gonna do my measurements and eyeball, make sure that the fin is vertical and that the horizontal stabilizer, the tail plane is level with the main wing. When I'm happy with that, what I will do is I will just, I've just actually sanded just from here to here just lightly so that it's better for the um, Sino. I'm just going to wick a little bit of Sino in the end here just to hold it in place and then when I've done that I'm going to gently unscrew it and then I'm just going to start adding um, medium Sino to the inside of the back plate and the inside of this former here and then when it's all dry we'll get onto the servo. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Now, just to give you some idea of what I'm using for the servos, I'm using um, Emacs servos, and mine have dropped in, literally dropped straight into here perfectly. Um, I'm using Emacs ES09MAs. And um, so, our, but I'm not putting them in yet. Let's get the boom set in because now I've got this all sorted. I've got the, the tube lengths, the outer tube lengths sorted. I'm now comfortable sticking this in place. And when I've got it all square, I'll get back to you. Right, so <clears throat> the boom is on permanently. <laughs> that went very well, actually. Um, <clears throat> Put a load of weight on the nose, hung the tail off the back of the bench, lightly just nipped up the screws, got it all, if you've got a nice tight, my boom's quite a nice tight fit, so it was, I got it roughly in place, then eyeballed it, measured it, and then I just had some weight on the nose, took the wing off, just gently put the wing back on just to make sure with the screws out, all looked lovely and square, and all I'd done is I just tapped a little bit of um, thin sino, just as the, where the boom comes out, the fuselage, just left that for a couple of minutes and then gone heavy with medium um, Sino in where all the formers are. So the next thing we are going to do is I am now going to set up my, um, put that 
quite a few large out of the way. I'm now going to set up my um, servos. So these are the Emacs we talked about. Um, I'm just going to screw these in um, using my lovely IFU um, electric screwdriver. If you want one of these, if you go to my Amazon Influencer page, um, there's actually a recommendation on there. Now, I already put these screws in once. Little tip here, they're, I mean, the, the servos fit in beautifully, but there's quite a narrow tolerance, and that's nothing to do with the kit, it's just the way the servos are. So I did some very tiny pilot holes, then I made the hole suitable for the screws. I then wicked some thin Sino into the holes, let that dry and that just stops any breakthrough possibly you know in this sort of area here and it just gives the, the hole a little bit more strength so i'm just going to pop the servos in now onto the tray and then i'm going to fit the tray in place but i'm not going to fit the glue the tray i'm just going to temporarily hold the tray just about where i want it now the reason i'm saying that is is it will depend on the height of your servos and the height at where the uh, push rods come out through the fuselage. So if you push this up to the top runner of the fuselage, you might find you get quite a steep angle like so, because it's going to come out the, out the fuzz, fuzz former like that, and then come up at an angle. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to get mine in place that I'm happy with the position with the arms I'm going to use. And then when I'm happy with that, because that then means that if it's, everything's not quite right, I can still do a little bit of tweaking and then we're going to add the little metal push rod clevises um, which so the wire comes in the kit with the heat shrink this is what we're talking about I've just bent one of those up we're going to be bending four of those up and I'm going to talk you through how that process is going to go in a moment but I'm just going to get all the servos and everything in with their arms ready so we can have a final jiggle through And I'm now going to temporarily put this in place. Right, I've got to say, these are brilliant. This is, um, if you go on my Amazon influencer pages, I'll put a link down on the bottom. It's not going to make me in there. But if you fancy one of these, I'm going to put a link on my Amazon influencer page for these, if you want these. Uh, nice rechargeable electric screwdriver. I'll take it everywhere with me. Very good. And the other nice thing is, if you, uh, for any reason, you want a bit of extra torque, you can actually just use it like a normal screwdriver. So I'm now going to drop these bad boys into place, and then we're going to think about um, getting this wire that I've bent. This is in your kit. So you'll have this in your kit, this wire, and you'll also have this heat shrink. So the idea is, is that um, you want a, a length about so much, and then the idea is we're going to put the heat shrink over it, I'm going to shrink it down and then when I'm happy with it I'm just going to nip a little bit of um, cyano down the end so that is going to end up on the carbon fibre rod looking like so but I will talk you through that but I'm just going to get this in place now so I've got a final little bit of jiggling just to make sure I'm happy with there, where everything's sitting now one last tip with putting the servo tray in be very careful because depending on the height of your servos is going sorry depending on your height of your servos is going to depend um, on where the um, push pull tube is coming out so on my particular servos if I make my tray fit up underneath the former which you think would be fantastic be extra strength it's quite a steep angle um, for the throws I'll, I'll show you Okay, so the uh, servo end, I have just bent myself up a piece of wire there to go into the servo arm. I then put this heat shrink on. I've just wicked a little bit of cyano on it, and then I then just use my heat gun, and I've shrunk that down. Be very careful, because this will give off fumes um, from the cyano. And then that is then gonna drop back in place. When I've got these both done, Obviously I've made sure that my servos have been centered before I started. I'm now gonna drop that in. I'm gonna do exactly the same for the rudder. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work at the other end doing exactly the same. Right, gear is installed. 
are one key. I am going to need a bigger key shed. Right, now then, let's talk through the electronics. Um, I use the motor, which is a 22003, I think. It's the one that was recommended. Luckily, it just happened to have one kicking around. Ironically, from my late father's collection of an extensive collection of motors. Um, the fuselage without battery runs out at 300 grams. Um, no real issues with um, putting those uh, linkages in. What I did at the front was exactly the same. The only difference was I didn't use a heat gun. I used the back end of a soldering iron. But what I did do is I slid this ruler down in past down past the fuselage just to protect it from any sort of um, overspill of the heat. So now so there are some things we have to talk about. Oh yeah, just to say that the propeller is standard, but the spinner I've got's a little bit small at the moment. So um, now we have to talk about certain aspects of the covering of the wings. main panel now the um, spoiler servos I've used I've used some Hyperion servos and you know me I'm a cheapskate and I like to do things on the cheap oh, come on, Nick. All right. there's my Hyperion servos that I use they're basically old metal geared wing servo digital wing servos and they weigh in at about nine grams of some old DLG models I had now they went in very well top tip do not use hot glue to put your uh, spoiler uh, servos in either use a medium sino with a bit of tape wrap around the servo or I'd use some 30 minute aerodite where the game with some tape around it. Hot glue is a big failing and I, that was my big mistake over the Aussie Res. Now, the covering, it's very important we talk about this. It's a very thin trailing edge. If you are a big fan of using a heat gun, my advice would be don't. Um, I did this exactly as I've done in the video where you saw me covering the Aussie Res from the same manufacturer. I literally tacked all the edges and then when I'd got it all tacked down um, I then just slowly went tacked down every rib every rib every rib did the whole thing and then systematically did a couple of panels between each rib top and bottom and then slowly worked my way out I honestly believe if you used a heat gun you might end up warping the trailing edge that is just my personal view. I've managed to get one where that's absolutely spot on. And I've not, I've seen these with um, literally fillets on every rib. Yeah. So that main panel ran out at 180 grams with the servos in. So that's flying weight. And the same for covering the um, outer wing, the um, I used the same, even when I was doing the ailerons, covered the ailerons, tacked it all the way around, and then slowly did every panel. Also, worth mentioning, is that when I'd finished, and I'd done one under surface, and I was just tightening it all up, I'd put it back down on the bench with a load of these weights, just to let the whole thing cool down and settle. Um, also, I would recommend doing that for the tail surfaces, um, which you just reminded me I need to say something about that. Right, so there you go. I have used, the servos I have used for the wing is the, um, I got these from the, um, the component shop. I have no affiliation with that shop. Um, these are metal geared and they are run in at about nine grams and it's they that's what they are there it's a km1002 metal drive 
or it says MD digital so I'm assuming it means metal drive but they are metal geared for the fuselage so for the rudder and the elevator I've used these very nice Emacs um, servos which are ES09MA um, and they fitted straight into the servo tray absolutely superb right so um, oh one last thing just so everybody knows I use my soap my use that very thick um, UV resistant my greenhouse tape to control to as the elevator hinge for elevator hinge and rudder hinge it's quite thick and for the um, both the spoilers I use the mini hinge tape that you can get from uh, Angel Wing Designs very very good on small models I just was worried about whether this would be man enough on such a big model but I use this all the time on my sub um, two meter um, gliders very good so anyway um, I'm sorry it's been a little bit of a long time um, if anybody knows it is the 10th of November 2023 and I think the last three or four weeks in the UK has been absolutely abysmal but fingers crossed there is a small window on the horizon for this Saturday so fingers crossed I'll get the test flight done ASAP and we'll talk more about the battery C of G and everything like that on the test flight so anyway I hope everybody's well uh, thanks for subscribing and watching and I'll see you shortly